Welcome. I'm Sergeant Matt Buckeye. I'm the recruiting sergeant for the Oklahoma City Police Department. Um, and I'm going to give you guys a PowerPoint presentation, a little bit about our department, um, what our basic requirements are, um, the people we're looking for, a little bit about our academy, the application process, those kind of things. Um, and then hopefully I will be able to answer any questions that you uh, might have. Um, so well, let's just begin with that. Um, again, my name is Sergeant Matt Buckeye, recruiting sergeant with the Oklahoma City Police Department. Um, I've been on about 13 years. I spent about eight years of that um, in patrol, and the last five years I've been in the recruiting unit, um, which I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, one of the benefits of choosing our department over any other department in the state um, is the opportunity to do so much more in law enforcement besides just being a patrol officer. So, um, and I'm a prime example of that. Being able to work in patrol, I enjoyed it. Um, I wasn't looking to get out. I wasn't disgruntled. Um, but, you know, there's a, there's a lot more to do than just being a patrol officer. And um, I'm getting, getting to do that being in the recruiting unit. So, so let's start with our basic requirements. Um, really have four simple ones. Got to be a U.S. citizen. Um, Got to be between the ages of 21 and 45. Um, have a valid driver's license and our minimum education is a high school diploma or a GED. Um, a little bit on the age requirement, um, 21 to 45, you can start the application process at 20 years old as long as you turn 21 before the start of the academy. Um, for example, our next academy starts January 8th, hopefully, with this coronavirus going on. We're not sure what's going to be extended out. Um, the uh, next academy was supposed to start April 24th, but we've moved that to May because of the virus. So um, we've moved the December test date, I mean, December start uh, date for the, the next academy for January. Um, so I'm not sure if we're going to extend that out any further. It just kind of depends. But if you are 20 years old and you turn 21 before that January 8th date, then you can start the process right now. If you don't turn 21 until after January 8th, then obviously you would not be able to start that process. Um, on the back end of that, 40, 45, as long as you don't turn 46 before the start of the academy, um, you can turn 46 day two of the academy and you'll be good to go. Um, so hopefully I don't think we have anybody in the class um, that is that old. But anyway, um, plenty of uh, time to um, get on our department. So. Uh, yeah, so who are we looking for? Um, I always say this when I give this PowerPoint presentation. Um, I could not even put this slide up and ask you guys to tell me who, um, who we're looking for is um, to be a police officer. I think every agency is the same. Um, obviously, we're always look, we're looking for people with integrity, good moral and ethical behavior. All of that's really all in the same. Um, good character, um, strong work ethic, community-oriented, um, clean backgrounds. And what I mean by clean backgrounds is um, we don't want someone to come through our process that has had 10 jobs in the last year. Um, you know, it just does not look good. That's not good job stability, and that's what we're looking for. So we don't care where you work at. Um, you could be flipping burgers at Burger King. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as you come to work, um, you're not late, you do your job, um, that's good work, work history for us. So um, if for some reason you don't like your, where you worked at, um, for whatever reason, just give your proper notice. We see it all too often. People just quit, um, and and that doesn't look good for us. So give your two weeks notice if you're going to leave a job. So um, that's good work history. Uh, good driving habits. Um, don't panic if you have some speeding tickets. It's not going to disqualify you. Um, however, we do have three moving violations in the last two years as a um, SOP policy. So if you have more than that. Um, we would defer you until you have less than that. So um, if you don't have those, just don't get speeding tickets and you'll be just fine. Um, financial st stability, um, you guys all college kids, you guys should be fine with your uh, finances. Nobody should be in debt, debt yet. Um, but basically we're just looking for um, bad debt. You know, there's a point in the process you will provide your um, credit report and we're just looking for repossessions, a bankruptcy, you know, um, collection items, those kind of things. None of which that would disqualify you in our process, but it could defer you. Um, for example, if someone's had a bankruptcy um, within the last year, um, we would defer you we want, for at least a year. 
Um, we want you to have some stability in those finances. Whatever got you in that situation where you felt you needed to have a bankruptcy filed, we want to make sure you're back on your feet. So we would defer you. So um, uh, same way with uh, collection stuff. Just any kind of bad, bad debt that you have, um, just make sure you have some kind of payment arrangements um, with your debt collector. We don't want you just ignoring it and, and um, just leaving it on your credit and not doing anything. That does not good does not look good for us um, and so a little bit of your character and you're taking responsibility of of your debt so um, yeah uh, so moving right along here let's go to the next slide here so why would you choose our department um, you know we are the uh, largest agency in the state um, we have about 1100 officers on our department um, Tulsa has about 750 officers uh, I think OHP has about 750. I, I, I don't generally include um, OHP in discussion as far as being advancing and doing other things in um, law enforcement besides patrol because that's really all they do is, is traffic. Um, so with Oklahoma City or in Tulsa, Tulsa again 750 us about 1100. Um, every other agency in the states less than 200. Um, you have and actually you have Lawton, um, Broken Arrow, and I believe Norman, all about 175, um, and everybody else in the state in the state is less than 100. So um, that I'll just tell you the opportunity to move around um, is really just two choices you have, and that's us in Tulsa. So, um, but and that goes with advancement as well. Um, you know, after you've been on so long, five years, you can test for the position of sergeant. Um, it's just a title; it's not a position. Um, you pass a test and um, you get the pay increase and we'll go over that slide in just a second as far as the pay raise the pay increases from a rookie to a um, officer and sergeant and so on so um, but after you've been a sergeant for two years then you can test for lieutenant um, and then after two years a lieutenant you can test for a captain um, and then on up the chain and we'll go over those in just a little bit but um, I mentioned earlier about education. Um, we only require a high school diploma or GED. However, um, education does come into play when you start to look to promote. Um, you're going to have to have some college when you get to a first line supervisor, which is a lieutenant, is what we call a lieutenant. So, um, so yeah, why would you choose us? Uh, mobility and advancement, I mentioned. Our work schedule is eight days on and six days off. Um, in my opinion, those are really the two most important things of why you would choose our department again advancement um, advancement opportunity um, and in your work schedule a little bit about our work schedule we have four shifts okay um, our first shift is seven to five our second shift is four to two uh, third shifts 9 30 to 7 30 and then our fourth shift is two to midnight um, each of those shifts say they either run tuesday to tuesday wednesday to wednesday Thursday to Thursday or Friday to Friday. Um, so basically we have two sets. So let's say you work four to two, you're on second shift um, and you're on A set. You're working, let's say Tuesday to Tuesday. So B sets off while you're working and then when you're off, B sets comes on. So that's kind of how our, our scheduling works. Um, competitive salary, um, we have a couple departments in the state that start a little bit more than us. Um, Edmund and Norman, I believe those are the two. Um, but after a couple of years, and I'll go over that slide in just a little bit, um, we'll increase our pay, um, and then eventually you will be the top paid um, officer in the state with Oklahoma City. So, and then keeping in mind, again, the opportunity um, that you can move around. So, um, we're in the smaller agencies, you're not going to have that luxury. I mention this a lot, um, just for an example of, uh, for the opportunity is, let's just say, um, Edmond, for example, you know, I think Edmond might have 80 police officers. So, you know, looking to go into investigations, um, whether it's larceny or homicide or burglary or whatever you decide to go into, um, you're going to, you might be all of those as a detective in Edmond. Um, larceny detective, auto thefts, crimes against children, sex crimes, homicide, you, you do all those things. Where in our in our department, we have a unit for each one of those. Um, and we have several investigators in each one of those units. So just to tell you the, the opportunity to advance. Um, so continuing on, uniform allowance. Uh, we, 
we provide you everything. All your equipment is paid for um, and provided for you during the academy as well when you graduate. Um, you have everything from shoots, shoes, long sleeves, short sleeve shirts, plenty of those, plenty of pants, um, your duty gear, your firearm, ammunition, all that stuff is all provided for you. Um, and also on the uniform allowance, we pay you um, $900 a year. That's $450 uh, stipend in the spring and in the fall. And then also $35 per paycheck we pay you for uniform cleaning or just whatever. It's on your um, check. So that equates to about $1,800 a year. Um, I say that um, and I keep this out of the, the power, the, the slide for the pay because that's something that's negotiable through our FOP. So um, that could change from time to time. So $1,810 um, a year extra on top of what I'm getting ready to show you on the slide. Um, for pay. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, and then excellent training. Um, our department provides training for departments across the state and across this country um, that come to our homicide school, our crime scene investigation school, um, motor school, whatever school we put on. Um, we've got departments everywhere coming in. So um, you're going to get the best training and it doesn't stop just with the academy. Um, once you graduate the academy, you know, we have in service three times a year. Um, that you're required to just keep your cleat certification up. Um, and, you know, in a little bit, it's a good time for me to mention cleat certification. Um, as you would know, I'm sure uh, that in the state of Oklahoma, to be a police officer, you're required to be cleat certified. Um, so you would obtain that cleat certification by attending our academy, but you have to maintain that cleat certification each year. And then, like I said, we do an in-service training um, throughout the year, three different in-service trainings. So um, that'll continue on um, through your career as well. And then Prestige, we're Oklahoma City Police Department. We're the top in the state. We're pretty proud about who we are. Uh, career development. Um, after you've been on the department for three years, you can look to um, do other things and in, in, um, move up and go, go to other units. Um, these are just a few. This isn't everything we do. Um, but I've kind of marked out a few of ones and, and a couple I want to point out with asterisk here. Um, the SWAT team, which we call the tactical team, um, and also the bomb squad. Both of those are not a, um, that's not your job, that's not your position. You're part of a team to be on that. You'd still be in patrol, um, being assigned to the tactical unit um, and on the bomb squad. Of course, you, there's a tryout for that and you got to pass a physical and, and have an interview and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, but I don't want to want you to think that you're a full-time tactical unit person. That's all you're going to be doing. No, you're still in patrol. Um, and same way with on the SWAT. I also like to mention the K-9 unit. The K-9 unit, I think we have 12, off, 12 dogs on the department. So out of 1,100 officers, you got 12 dogs. Um, the chance of you being a K-9 officer at three years is pretty, pretty tough. Um, it's, I'll just be honest with you, it's not going to happen. So, um, but you know, we don't want those guys to be, um, you know, we want some experience. Guys that are our canine officers been around a long time. They're good. They're our best officers. So, um, yeah, we're going to put some time on behind, um, on the department before you can get on to something like that. So not saying you can't apply for it at three years. I'm um, just being honest with you. It's going to be tough to get on that. Most of those guys have been on seven, eight years, and, and it takes a couple of times um, before they even get on um, the canine unit. So, um, yeah, I think that's all I really wanted to touch base on on all those. But there's just so much more as well. Um, again, these are just a few things after you've been on the department so long that you can move around. And, and I touched on it earlier about, you know, just advancement. That's, that's probably the biggest thing I can tell you why you want to choose Oklahoma City over any department in the state. It's just, it's just advancement, opportunity. Um, it just can do just so, so much more than just be a patrol officer. Again, don't want to make it sound like patrol is not a good thing to do. To be in, people stay in this department 25, 30 years and all, all spent in patrol. Um, but, you know, hey, we preach it in the academy and they tell you every three or four years, move around, try something different, build up that resume. Um, and especially the time when it comes to you wanting to promote and be a supervisor, you're going to need that. We're not going to have someone um, that gets to move around that's just been in patrol and not gone in different um, tried different things, you know, um, and built up that resume, especially if you want to go inside and be an investigator. Um, you know, you want to you want to move around and jump in the gangs and try some gang initiative and and those kind of things. So build that resume, tech schools, crime scene school, um, accident investigation schools, all the schools 
Um, we even preach in the academy. Sign up for those things. Um, go to those schools, build that resume, it just makes you a better police officer. So um, benefits, uh, I kind of touched base on a lot of this already. Uniforms, equipment, firearms um, paid, paid for and provided. Um, we offer vacation, holidays, sick leave, all that, all departments, honestly. Um, we all have the bells, whistles, and chains. Um, again, th what really sets us apart is those two things I mentioned earlier. Your opportunity to ad advance um, and then your work schedule, eight and six. You just can't beat that. So we do have a 20-year retirement program. After you've been on 20 years, you get 50% of your salary. Um, and then every year after that's two and a half percent increased up to a maximum of 75%. So um, you can't beat that, put on 30 years um, and retire with 75% of your pay. Um, I mentioned the work schedule already, eight and six. Take home car program. If you live in the city of Oklahoma City, um, you can take your car home. So, which is really nice. Uh, let's say you live way southeast by almost Shawnee, uh, by Lake Thunderbird. And you work at Hefner Division way up on the north side, 122nd in Portland. Um, that's a long ways to drive, man. It'd take you 45 minutes, an hour to get, get that far. It's nice if you'd be able to take your scout car home um, and you, get, you, know, you don't have to worry about gas and that kind of stuff. So um, that's really nice. So, um, but you got to live in the city of Oklahoma City in order to take home your uh, scout car. Um, overtime programs. I break these down into two. Um, we have extra jobs and we have overtime. Um, and they're endless right now in the department. So overtime is working seatbelt overtime or you're working traffic overtime. You're just pulling, um, pulling speeders over, uh, working in areas where we have a lot of uh, accidents. Like I always bring up Expressway in Rockwell as a common spot where we have accidents there all the time. A lot of traffic there. So you could sign up for overtime and just be working that area um, and making department overtime which is gonna be a little bit more money than it would for an extra job. Um, but all that's paid through the city. Um, extra jobs are jobs like at a bank, um, working the Thunder, um, you know, Oklahoma City Dodger uh, baseball or Oklahoma City Energy Soccer. Um, hopefully, eventually we'll get to go back to doing those kind of things um, when this virus goes away. But um, you have that opportunity to do all those things. So um, those are a, a separate, um, entity, you're, you're being paid by those corporations and not through the city. So um, the pay isn't the same as overtime on the department, um, but you're not doing the same as well. So really you're, you know, and I get it often. I work a lot of the Thunder games. I actually work all of them. And people are always asking, saying to me, hey, you're, uh, this is a nice gig you got here working um, as a, working at the Thunder game. Well, I don't work for the city. I'm, you know, Chief Gorley's not going to sign me to work just the Thunder Games. It's an extra job. So anytime you see someone at that event, or like I said, the Dodgers, Energy, a bank, or something like that, that officer's already completed their shift for the day, um, or they're on their days off. Um, it's not something they get assigned with the city. So, um, But those jobs are endless, um, both of those, overtime and extra duty. Um, you... Um, there's guys on this department, uh, officers have been on one or two years and making well over $100,000. It just depends on what you want to work on your days off. Um, if you just want to spend your six days off and be happy, that's, you can do that. If you want to work a couple of those days, uh, make some extra money, save up for a new car, vacation, pay for some college tuition for your kids or whatever. Um, you have that opportunity, which, which is really nice. So um, we do pay extra on bilingual and sign language. Um, we have a shift infantry, which most of you guys, when you get on our department, will go to a night shift, so you're going to get paid extra um, for being on that. And then longevity pay starts um, after your, first, your third full year. So starting your fourth year, you get an increase every year no matter what. Um, and it's a percentage based on what the rookie pay, and I'll go over that in just a second. So um, tuition reimbursement education incentive. You guys uh, just finished your associates. Um, and want to get on with us, great, and you want to finish that bachelor's later, um, we're going to reimburse you up to $1,250 per semester um, for fees and, and tuition. So, um, and then if you do finish your bachelor's and then get on with us, you want to work on your master's, you can. So a really nice incentive there. Um, so moving on here, let's go to the pay scale. So our, here's our basic pay scale. Uh, recruit step A, 2273 an hour. Um, that's about $47,500 a year. That's what you would start out in the academy. You will make that in the academy for the uh, 
duration of the academy, which is 28 weeks, about seven months. Um, as soon as you graduate the academy, then you go to step B, which is about $54,000. Um, keeping in mind, this is not your college incentive because we pay you more if you have a college degree, which all you guys will have a college degree, so you'll get paid more, and I'll explain that to you in a minute. Um, it doesn't include shift differential, um, your uniform allowance, or anything like that. Um, and again, I, I'll go over some of this pay uh, increases as well. Um, so step B, again, once you graduate the academy, about $54,000. Um, then you'll stay on that while you're in the FTO program, uh, which is four months, and then you have a six-month probation period. Um, so that equates to about a year and a half. So day one of the academy, a year and a half later, when you officially become a police officer, and you're at about $58,000 a year, um, which is not a bad salary. Um, at all. It's very nice. So after step, that's step A. Step B would be year two, step C would be year three, etc. All the way to a maximum of seven years at step G as an officer. Um, you would max out at 66 too. Um, when you've been on the department for five years, that's when you can test for a sergeant. Um, and then you would go up, you tap pass a test, I touched base on it a little bit earlier. Um, you take the exam, it's not a position, it's just a title. Um, we offer that test twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall. Um, and once you pass that exam, then you become a sergeant and you get more money. Um, so one common question I get a lot is people see the step A in sergeant 65 and then the step G for an officer is 66.2. Why are you uh, making less money? Well, somewhere between these two here, step A and step G, you're going to be at five years. So you're going to be less than that. And so it is going to be a pay increase to go up to the sergeant. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, then each year after, step B, step C, et cetera, as I mentioned, the same on the officer, um, the sergeant's the same way, um, up to a maximum of 12 years in step L at 83.2. Again, keeping in mind this does not include your um, college incentive, shift differential, your longevity you'll get after your third full year. Um, this is just bottom line base pay. Associates is 75. Bachelor's is 150 and master's or above is 175. This is per month increase. Um, bilingual and sign language pay. Um, what this entails is it's 50, 75, or 100 dollars per pay period. So you have to go take an exam to check your fluency level. Um, we pay for Spanish and Vietnamese right now. So um, I don't know what all that entails. I just know you have a test you take and they determine that fluency and that determines what your pay is. So if that's, let's say you're very fluent and this is Spanish, that's $100 per pay period. Well, with 26 pay periods a year, there's an extra $2,600. Um, so add that on top of that. That's even more money and you might as well, sign language can be an elective in college. Why not take it? You, we're going to pay you more when you get on our department. So. Tuition reimbursement, I mentioned this earlier, it's $12.50 a semester, um, tuition and fees, so you can take advantage of that if you don't um, finish your associates or bachelors or whatever and you want to work on that. So um, a question I get to, can I use it for anything? I mean, does it have to be police science or criminal justice or anything like that? No, it doesn't. Um, you can um, just whatever, you just, as long as it's passing, you, you got to see in the class, um, then we'll reimburse you for that. So uh, how do I become a police officer? So, here are all the steps it takes to become a police officer. It's very lengthy. Um, it takes anywhere between two and six months to get on. Um, it's not something you can just go over to, I use Burger King all the time. I don't eat a Burger King, believe it or not, but um, I use them uh, all the time. And it's not like applying at Burger King and you know in a couple of days you're going to know if you got the job or not. It's, it's the very extensive background done on you and done on every applicant um, and rightfully so. I mean we're going to give you a gun and a badge. Um, you can possibly take someone's rights away. Um, we we want to make sure we put the best of the best in there and we do that. We are very thorough with our um, background investigations on each applicant. So I'm going to go over each one of these with you. Um, the application process starts with submitting an application. Um, I don't have that up there because that's really simple. You just go to our website, which is joinokcpd.com. Um, right there on the home page, it says apply here. You click on that. Um, that takes you to a government jobs website called NeoGov. Um, you'll see the job posting for the police officer position, um, what class we're hiring for, which currently we're hiring for class 142, which is going to start in January. Um, so 
You'll see that and then you top right hand corner, you just click on apply here and then you create a profile with NeoGov and you put all your personal information and your employers and answer the questions. It's pretty simple. Um, that generally takes us about a week to 10 days to process that. Um, and all that entails is running your driver's license, um, making sure you have a valid driver's license, run some records checks on you, make sure you don't have any major arrest. Uh, I get a, a question a lot. People ask me, hey, I've been arrested before, public intoxication at Bricktown or whatever. Um, you're not going to just get disqualified because of that. So, um, but we want to pull your record and see what, if you had any arrests, what they were, um, how major they are, those kind of things. Um, and then we want to make sure on the application all your basic requirements are met, which I touched base on those four earlier today. So um, most people make it past that process, that first step rather, um, and go to this, the second step, which is the personal history questionnaire, PHQ, what we call the PHQ. Um, it's an online software program we use called used through Guardian Alliance Network. Um, we would send you a link if you proceeded to that step. Um, you go online, this is where you're going to fill out a lot more about your driving record, your employment history, your finances, any criminal history, and then a lot of other questions that we didn't ask on the initial application, as well as a drug screening, um, your uh, drug questionnaire you're going to have to fill out. Um, really the only drug question we have on the initial application is uh, hallucinogenic drugs. Have you ever experimented in hallucinogenic drugs um, and those like PCP, um, mushrooms, your really bad stuff. That's going to get you automatically disqualified. Um, other drugs, it's just going to be a deferral. Um, so, um, for example, like marijuana. We have 18 month no marijuana. Um, so if you're one in likes to smoke marijuana and you're not applying with us for a couple of years, I'd quit it right now and you'll be just good to go in 18 months and it won't cost you, it won't hurt you in our process. So, but again, in the PHQ, you're going to fill out that kind of stuff. Um, so, once that's complete, we give you 20 days to complete that. Um, it's very important that you follow the directions that we give you on that. Um, 20 days is more than enough time to get it complete. Most people, if you jump on it, a couple of three days and they're done with it. Um, but some people drag it out. Um, don't be that person. Just jump on it, get it done. Um, it shows us a little, some initiative there and shows you're, you really want this job and you're ready to get, get this process going. So um, don't drag your feet on it and get it done. Um, but we give you plenty of time to do it. Once you get it submitted, then we do what we call a PA, uh, desk review um, in the office. So you get assigned a background investigator um, and they look over the PHQ making sure there's any, not any disqualifying um, issues. And so um, if, if that's the case, you know, we would let you know, hey, let's say we found out you had three moving violations um, and then we defer you or um, you had a bankruptcy, you obviously don't answer, ask that question on the initial application, so you would ask, answer it in the PHQ, then uh, we would defer you for at least a year until the finances are on, um, all stable. So um, those kind of things we look through the PHQ. If you're good to go, um, we invite you to test date. That's the next step. So the next is that the physical ability test um, or the written exam and the written exam, sorry. So the PAT is the physical ability test. We have a um, video of that. And if you can, and I'll, I'll show it, um, you just click on, go back to our website, joinokcpd.com. Um, in the top right hand corner of that screen, you see fitness standards. If you click on that, um, you can watch a YouTube video of the course um, and all the entails, it's narrated. So everything you need to know about the physical um, is right there. The written exam, the LEAB, we call it the Law Enforcement Aptitude Battery Exam. Um, it's not like any other test you've ever taken before. There's no math, no, um, no grammar, no spelling, um, reading comprehension, none of that stuff. Um, the LEAB is broken into three sections. The ability section, the work histories, and the life experiences. Um, the work his the uh, ability section is cognitive type thinking skills. Um, questions that we ask on that and we'll give you a study guide for that. Um, so you'd be called graduates, you guys should be fine with that. Um, the other two sections, the work history and life experiences, really nothing to study for on that. Um, you just answer the questions. Um, we want to know 
um, your work history, you know, are you goal oriented? Are, do you approach your job with willingness to perform? You know, things that are important as being a police officer. You can't be someone that just sits behind the car and do, does absolutely nothing. We need you to be out there being proactive. Um, so, a lot of questions on that. So, you just, you just answer questions, nothing to study. And then, life experiences, you know, how do you handle emotional stress in your life? Um, things that are going to come into play as a police officer, most important. So, um, yeah, again, nothing to study on those. You just answer those questions. Um, we, there's a minimum score you have to get to pass it. Um, and then if for some reason you fail either one of those, the physical is a three-month deferral and the written is a six-month deferral if you failed either one of those. Um, if you pass one but fail the other, your, physical, your written is good for two years and your physical is for one. Um, so after you pass that, then we have an applicant interview board. Um, usually it's within a week or two after the physical and the written exam. Um, the interview board consists of three people from our unit, the recruiting unit. Um, we give you five questions before the interview, give you 20 minutes before that interview to prepare and, uh, and write down notes, do whatever you need to do. Um, you can use the notes in the interview. Um, believe it or not, a lot of people struggle with that. Um, so it's, it's, there's not going to be questions about how to handle a homicide scene, nothing related about police work because you don't even know what that is because you're not a police officer yet. Um, but it's integrity type questions, you know. Um, you pull over your, you know, pull over your mom and you're going to write her a ticket. Um, you know, maybe why do you want to be a police officer? What have you done to prepare yourself to be a police officer physically, professionally, personally? Those kind of questions. So again, um, you could probably Google all that, those kind of questions out there. Um, I mean, every department's going to use this kind of the same line of uh, questioning when it comes to uh, being a police officer. So uh, after you pass the interview board, believe it or not, we do have people that don't pass that. Um, some do really, really well on it and some just get by. Um, and then, of course, we have some people to fail. So um, uh, I would encourage you on the interview board, just, just Google up some questions out there because, like I said, it's going to be pretty, pretty common in, integrity type questions on, on the interview board. So polygraph examination, once you pass that, um, the easiest way to pass the polygraph is tell the truth. So usually when I'm in class, I ask that and there's nobody in here to answer that. So, but easiest way to, to pass it is just to tell the truth. Don't go Google it and how to pass a polygraph because you're going to fail it. Um, you'll have countermeasures and all kinds of deals trying to just be honest and tr just be upfront. That's it. Be truthful and everything will be just fine. So um, now I do get it a lot. People say, well, well, I was I told you the truth when I stole that five thousand um, dollars and um, I told you I did it. Well, yeah, we probably would have a we're going to have a problem with that. But I mean, I'm just saying if it's that stupid DVD you stole when you're 16 years old and um, you didn't put that in your PHQ, you're going to think about that stuff when you come to the polygraph. And they're going to ask you, hey, have you ever um, stole anything? No. And then you're going to get a reaction to it um, because you didn't put it down. We would, we'll, we'll be fine with that. You know, heck, it, you stole the DVD, whoop de doo We've done some silly stuff when we're minors so, or juveniles. So just be truthful. And I'm going to get to that in just a second, I think. Oh, there it is right there. It's the next, next slide. So after you pass the polygraph examination, um, you go to your background investigator, the same person that did your desk review. Now this is where it's going to be at least 80 hours of time on that background investigator because they're going to call every police department you worked at, lived at, went to school at. So if you've been all over the place, that could take some time. Um, we're going to call all your references. You need to provide at least five. We asked five to seven, but at least five of them. Going to call all your employers. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff we have to do in the background um, to get you through that step. So, but just know that as you go to each step in this process, um, the chances of you getting higher increase as you go. Um, so, you get to that point. We're not going to work something, someone, an applicant in the background portion of the process, and we didn't want you. It, it's, that's not going to be the case. So, um, we're going to find out way before probably at the desk review, unless something you're not being truthful with and we find out. So, um, but yeah, background investigations, we're going to work you, we want you, and then we take you to the hiring board um, or the, what we call the oral review board. Um, the oral review board is four majors and a deputy chief. It's a very stressful interview, um, but it's not something we have in place to 
disqualify you or weed out somebody. Um, we take you to the interview board, the hiring board rather, we want you. Um, and your background investigator will prepare you for that interview. So um, no yes or no answers to the questions in there. You're going to have to uh, sell yourself. Um, again, four majors and deputy chief. It's stressful in there, um, but they want to see you. Sometimes it might, you'll never see those guys. Um, except for at the board. Maybe later in your career when you get promoted or whatever, you might run into them. But um, there's your chance. They, they look at your um, personal history question and they see all that stuff. So your chance to sell to them who you are and why you want to be a police officer. So um, final selection, the, the hiring board or the review board says, hey, Chief Gorley, we recommend this person. Um, and then Chief Gorley has the final say so. Usually it happens the very next day. Um, you get a conditional letter of employment. Um, after that, you've got a drug and alcohol testing, uh, a medical and physical examination for the state police pension and retirement system um, to be entered into that. Um, you have to pass that state physical. So just those are really just a formality, everything after that. Um, and then the last thing is the MMPI, the Minnesota Multifacet Personal Inventory, I think is what it's called. So it's a personality exam and it's a post offer psyche eval really um, through your doctor. So, um, unfortunately, we do lose some people at that step in the process after getting conditional offer, but um, don't get all worked up about that. Just answer the questions on that, take the test. So, um, so here's where I usually ask anybody have any questions on that, but we don't have nobody in here to answer questions because I'm talking to a wall. So we'll move right along. So what can get dis me disqualified in the process? And I'm not going to dwell on this a whole bunch, um, but this is one thing that's going to get you booted really quick and just not being truthful. Um, I, we see it all too often. Somebody downplays something, whether it's they smoked weed, you know, four years ago when I was 18, 19 years old after high school, and um, I only did it a couple, three times. It's no big deal. I'm not even going to put it down. I didn't even get high on it or whatever. And then they come to the polygraph and they fail the drug question because um, they were thinking about it, you know, and they failed it. So just be upfront and, and honest. So um, we even give you a chance because we see it too often on test day and if you come to a test day I'm gonna tell you that day that morning everybody that's on test day hey if there's something that slipped your mind on your personal history questionnaire you need to come clean with us um, right now um, you know pull us off the side that day some one of us in recruiting and let us know hey I I stole that DVD when I was 17 I forgot about it and I didn't put it down or I smoked the marijuana but stuff that we would we would be okay with but we need you to be truthful with um, you don't want us to find something in your background or at polygraph you get failed because um, that's going to disqualify you. Not only will it disqualify you in our process, it's going to hurt you when you go to apply another agency. Um, because let's say you go to Norman after you leave us, or you, it could have been the other way around. You were Norman first, they disqualified you because you didn't pass the polygraph. You come and apply with us. Um, we're going to call them and ask what happened and we're going to find out. So it's going to ruin your chances with any agency if you lie. So just be truthful. Up a little bit about the academy. Um, it's 28 weeks. It's non-residential, meaning you go home. Um, it's Monday through Friday. Go home every night, um, typically 7 to 4. Um, you're off in the weekends. Um, there is some training during the academy um, where you'll go up to Burns Flat, Oklahoma. It's up northwest part of the state. Um, it's an old uh, Vance Air Force Base. You get the big course, drive really fast, do some cool stuff. So um, you'll spend a night up in their barracks a couple nights. Um, during the academy. But other than that, we're right here, um, right next to you guys, OSU OKC. Um, probably 80% of the academy is right here in this building. So um, there's some evening training as well. Um, we got to teach you how to make a traffic stop in the dark, uh, you know, clear some buildings in the dark, do some things that we can't do during the day. Um, so we might have you come in later during the day some of the time in the academy, one or two o'clock and stay through the night or whatever. So not through the night, but into the evening hours. So you can do some training at, at, at night. So, but other than that, it's again, Monday through Friday, seven to four generally. Um, and again, off on in the evenings and on the weekends. So um, I already told you, we will provide you um, all your uniforms and all your equipment, everything. Uh, these are some of the things you're gonna take in the, in the academy, about 1100 hours of college work. Um, it's about equivalent to about 32 hours of, of, of college. So if you didn't do any college and you got on our department and you went through the academy um, and you graduated, the courses you take in, in the academy is about, you take that up, to, you all your CLEAT certification, all your courses up to OSU OKC. 
and it transfers to about 32 hours is what I'm being told. So um, that's half an associates. Keeping in mind, you're doing that in seven months. So um, that's a lot of work. So, um, you know, I, I may be coming off making the academies that easy. It's going right through and the coursework and everything. It's, it's like working full time and going to school full time. Um, you will stay quite busy. Um, so some of the things here in the academy, you guys are already going to, you probably going to take in a lot of this stuff being in the COPS program. Um, but those are some of the courses you're going to be taking. And, and again, we have a lot more than that. Um, those are just a few. So uh, FTO program, once you graduate the academy, um, you are in FTO for four months. And what FTO is, is it's um, you're riding with a field training officer, um, different divisions, different sets, different shifts. Um, and you're just applying the tools you were taught in the academy to being a police officer on the streets. So um, again, that goes about four months long. You guys probably know a little bit about that from Sergeant Bunch. She's probably being our coordinator. She's probably talked talk to you about that before. So, and what is she exactly does with us. So what does it mean to be a police officer? So I always have this funny in here. Um, you guys, I think you guys can see that. What my buddies think I do, it's just a Dallas SWAT show. Um, this is what my mom thinks I do. It's an old sitcom back in the 40s or 50s called Car 54, I believe. Um, kids think I'm Superman. Um, Grown-ups all think I'm Adolf Hitler and I control everything. Um, and what I think I do is I'm Will Smith and Bad Boys, or if you want to be Martin Lawrence, I like Will Smith better. But this is what I think I do when in all actuality we do stuff like this. And I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but this is a gentleman here that's just in his underwear um, talking to a police officer. And so, I mean, 85%, 90% of what we do as police officers are is unrelated to criminal activity. It's stuff that we deal with, that kind of stuff. Um, this guy's obviously out of touch of reality. He doesn't have his clothes on. He's in his underwear. Um, I don't know if you need to see a real close up there. Yeah, that's a brown spot on the back of his underwear. So, um, yeah, he's not, uh, he's not with reality. So, I mean, but we, that's the kind of stuff we deal with. Um, I tell this story every time I give this PowerPoint. Um, when I worked up in, in Hefner Division on the north side of town, uh, 122nd and Penn, I got a call one time. A lady, her neighbor's grass uh, was too tall told me the city ordinance. It was uh, such and such, 27.4, whatever the number was, and it couldn't be taller than eight inches, and you could be fined, and they wanted me to mow the grass um, or take her to jail. And I mean, that's, that's a code enforcement. That is not a criminal matter. That's a civil matter. Um, so they can call down code enforcement and have her, um, you know, either mow the grass or write her a citation for not mowing the grass. So, but it's stuff like that. We still got to answer the call. Um, we got to take the call. So someone called 911. So that's our job, but um, like I said, 85-90% um, of what we do as uh, police officers is unrelated to criminal activity. However, most people sign up to do this job for that 15%, um, you know, getting guns and drugs and cleaning up the community and um, being something bigger than they are um, working out there in the community, So, um, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to be a police officer. So um, I grew up in, uh, in a very strict home, um, and so uh, big uh, integrity, good moral and ethical behavior. My parents stressed about being making the right choices. Um, so for me, what a better career, even though I got on when I was older, um, what a better career to do and, and more prideful than being a police officer and um, how, I, how I live my life and now it's in my career. So um, one of the reasons why I wanted to be a police officer. So anyway, so what does it mean to be a police officer? Um, I'll touch base a little bit on this before I finish up here. Um, the media has glamorized the crime-finding role um, that the police are, sends a message about. We're primarily about confrontation exercise uh, of power and use of force. Um, no, it's not what's all played out in the media. Um, you know, uh, it's all the bad stuff. They're all the, uh, like an officer involved shooting, it's, you know, you, you get, a lot of times the media beats us on a call, um, and I've had it happen before. Um, they beat me on a call. They're listening to the radio um, and find out what's going on and um, get there before I even get there. So, um, but what's bad about um, that is, is it's just you don't, we can't discuss it. For example, for an officer involved shooting, you know, media is wanting to know some answers um, to some questions about the shooting. Um, and then we're like, hey, we can't really, it's a, it's a criminal investigation. So we can't really answer those things. 
um, initially. So what do they do? They usually run off to the hundreds of people in the apartment complex or wherever it may be. Um, what, what, what happened? What's going on? Oh, yeah, I saw the officer. That guy didn't have a gun and he shot and killed him. You know, so um, it's ugly, but, you know, it all gets worked out. But that's what's unfortunate about the media is they want to get out there and get that story out when they really don't know the whole truth. So um, one thing that's good about this uh, now these days is with the body cams. We have the body cam. I'm a huge supporter of that. Um, it helps a lot of officers, you know. You get a lot of people out there in the public that want to make up stories, whether this person was bad or rude to me or whatever. It's all on camera now, so it'll get shown out. So that's a good thing. I think that's a positive. So now, do we have to put our hands on people? I don't want to downplay that. Well, absolutely we do. Um, unfortunately, sometimes people don't want to uh, do what's told of them, and they, they got a warrant or they got to go to jail. If they beat up their wives or their boyfriends or whatever. Um, we have to take care of. Um, and we have to enforce the law, so sometimes you have to do that. So um, few and far between, though. So what does it mean to be a police officer? Um, as you guys can see, all those things, I'm not going to read every one of those things. One thing I like to touch base on um, is what it mean, it changing your lifestyle. Because um, you will. You, you will lose family members. You will lose friends when you decide to be a police officer. So it's a legit question you have to ask yourself. Um, do I really want to do this career? Because um, you will. You'll have some people, you, you become a police officer, not going to like you um, for whatever reason. They had bad experience with law enforcement, um, whatever the case may be. Um, but you got to ask yourself, you know. Um, but don't panic if you have family members that aren't doing the things that they should be doing, not doing right. Um, we're not going to hold that against you, especially not in the application process. Um, you don't pick your family, but you do pick your friends. So keep it in mind if that roommate's smoking marijuana, um, either you need to go or they need to go. Um, that's not going to be good um, coming through our process and someone's doing some bad things and, and they're your buddy. So um, just keep that in mind. So what can I be doing now to better your chances of getting on, you, uh, on our department? You're already doing the most important thing and that's get a college degree. Um, we do only require high school diploma or GED, um, but it is a very competitive process to get on our department and most applicants have one of three things. One, they have a college degree, or two, they have military experience, or three, they have a good work history. You know, like been at the same job for a couple of three years. Um, again, use Burger King, for example. You flipping patties at Burger King, it, I don't care. You, you graduate high school at 18, you're working in, at Burger King or McDonald's um, for three years until you apply with us. You show up on time, you do what's asked of you, you don't steal, you don't cause drama. That's good work history, we like that. You've experienced. Um, been out there in the public. Um, I tell this a lot to high school kids. Um, if college is not your thing, um, that's fine. If military is not your thing, then go find a good job and I, I would do it in service. Um, whether it's working at Burger King, um, dealing with the public, or working at Texas Roadhouse, or, or wherever. Um, but you're dealing with the public because that's what you're going to do as a police officer. You're going to have to work out in the public and deal with the public. So. Um, the better you are um, equipped for that, it's probably, in my opinion, the most important thing to being a police officer, other than being a person of integrity, is you're being able to speak. You got to be able to talk to people. Um, that's probably the most important thing, the most important tool you have, um, especially in this day and age. Everybody's got cameras. Everybody's going to video. Um, of course, we have cameras now too. But um, yeah, you got to be able to get you, your mouth can get you out of a lot of stuff. Um, so you got to be able to speak. Most definitely got to speak. If you can't, figure out how to, or I guess go find a different career because that's not going to work for you with us. So um, I think I kind of touched base on a little bit of that, all, all this stuff already. Um, driving record, um, if you're not physically fit, you need to get physically fit, um, getting some kind of workout. You don't have to go to gym and start bench pressing, squatting a bunch of stuff. You don't need to do that. Just some good cardio, running, um, just some core strength exercise, push ups, set ups, that kind of stuff. Um, the obstacle course will be just fine if you do that kind of fitness. Um, tattoos, if you don't have any tattoos, um, don't go get them but, uh, below your elbow and you'll be safe. Um, if you're sleeved up to your elbow, you're good to go on our new policy. If you have something below, you're okay too as long as it's no bigger than your hand like that. Um, if you can cover it up like that, um, you can have seven tattoos right there. If you can cover it up with your hand, you're good. Um, if you have a wrist tattoo, you um, can cover that up. We allow a ring tattoo on each finger. So um, any questions really on a tattoo policy, you can always just um, 
ask Sergeant Bunn, maybe she might know it, or if not, you can call me, um, and I'll be more than happy to, or you can come by my office and we can look at it, see if it's okay. Um, trying to think, is there anything else in there? Uh, I, I did mention earlier on the employment, because it's really important. Um, don't just quit a job. Um, we see it so much. Um, people come in and, oh, I quit that job, I didn't like it, I was treated bad. Just give it a two weeks notice. Um, if you're not happy, I bet nine, time, nine times out of ten, your employer's not happy either. So they're going to say, oh, you two weeks notice, hey, it's okay, you can just go ahead and go now. Um, and you, but you gave your notice and you're good. Just don't quit. Do not quit on, um, on a job. So I think that is all. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to uh, bring up to you guys. Um, oh yeah, we did. We, we, a question of, I get a lot is, what's a typical day as a police officer? Um, so in patrol, you know, a typical day maybe you get a, you know, let's say you're on second shift. Um, you get out of line up at four, traffic starting to kind of um, pick up because everybody's getting to work. You might have to work an accident. Um, then, you know, working a couple of those, maybe toward the evening, eight or nine at night, people are home. Now we got a domestic, husband, wife, getting a fight. Um, those are typical stuff, domestics, working accidents, um, that kind of stuff. You know, a non-typical day, um, my officer involves shooting. We don't have them very often. Um, you getting into a fight, that doesn't happen very often. Um, you know, like I said earlier, the, the easiest thing to get through that kind of stuff is just being able to speak and talk um, and having good command bearing when you go into a call and control the situation. You'd be, be surprised when you go in and you're standing stall, tall and you've got that command bearing, you can handle a call and people tend to back down. If you're weak and you go in there, yeah, the, the bad guy's going to sense that and take advantage of that the best they can. So, um, uh, let see, typical day, um, turnover. We do have a uh, turnover in the department. Um, I'd probably say about 20% retention um, in the academy from the start of the academy to the um, end of the FTO, period, FTO um, program, we lose about 20% officers. So if we have 100 in the academy, for example, we're gonna lose 20 um, by the end of the FTO program. As far as longevity though, or as being an officer on the department, uh, I'd say the majority of people spend at least 20 years on the department. Um, so yeah, that's uh, longevity most definitely good. Um, and I think I touched base on, uh, on the all, everything else. So um, I'm gonna leave you guys a couple of things if you uh, wanna reach out to me if something I didn't uh, answer for you and you can't find it on our website. Again, it's joinokcpd.com. Um, you can call me. My direct number is 405, of course, 316-5734. Um, again, 316-5734. Or you can email me at matthew.buckheit. That's M-A-T-T-H-E-W dot B-U-C-H-H-E-I-T at OKC.gov. Um, you can email me that. And my information is on the website if you check the staff on the homepage. Um, and everybody in our recurrent unit is up there. So, all right. And again, any questions at all, feel free to call me or email me. And you guys have a good evening. Thanks for the time.